I'm Alan Janae along with Justin Adams and we're talking about the Broncos now that the season has wrapped up. You know, there's a lot to think about. I like the way they finished here. Yes. But yes. We have some big questions that I want to put on you right now. That's okay. right. Who is the biggest free agent the Broncos have to sign in the offseason? And here is your list. OK, go through this. Justin Simmons, Chris Harris Jr., Shelby Harris, Derek Wolf, a lot of guys on defense. Now, uh, the Broncos finished nicely. Mm -hmm. um, but we learned a lot. We learned a lot about the yeah. team and its needs. If you look at the people who will be free agents here, uh, give us your evaluation of uh, who we really know. I'm very fond of Justin Simmons. Yeah, that makes two of us. Yeah. I mean, he's the one of the biggest things that, that that you want in the NFL is to make sure you have somebody who's available. Not only a good player, but he's always available. It's going to be out there on the field. And Justin Simmons is one of those guys. Get this: in two seasons, he hasn't missed a snap. A snap mm -hmm. that doesn't happen in the NFL. So Justin Simmons, very important that you bring that guy back, especially on the back end of your defense. Chris Harris Jr. He's another guy as well. Sub may feel he had one foot out, one foot still in with the team, but he has been here with the Broncos for nine years. He will be a great addition back to this roster. Shelby Harris, he's been making great strides. Knocked down the pass last night going up against the Raiders, which could have been uh, the game-winning two-point conversion. Knocked that pass down. You have Connor McGovern, who's a center. Um, you have to figure out what are you going to do at that. That position there and then Derek Wolf he's been here for a long long time he did go down with the injury to end the season but he is a guy who does a great job at pass defense I mean rather in run defense uh, does that mean you can get him and keep him cheaper Maybe, but again, yeah. he's a guy who's looking for a bigger payday. And so yeah. he also had career high at sacks as well. Derek Wolf with seven sacks this season. Mm -hmm. So we could use that as he goes into the free agent market. Okay. If you don't keep some of those guys, mm -hmm. then do you need to get them in the draft? Or yeah. do, you, do you trade? You try to pick them up in the free agent yeah. market? You go to the free agent market, you go to the draft. There's uh -huh. several different areas you could go. You can luck out and get a drafted free agent as well. But at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you take care of some of these guys and take care of some of the holes as well. Okay. All right. Susan and Rob. Uh, chiming in this morning, they say Justin Simmons for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I think Justin Simmons is not only a great football player, he's probably going to be a great broadcaster when he's done. Oh, easily. He's an extremely bright yeah, guy. There's a reason why uh, he's always in front of the camera. We put it that way. <laughs> Very good with what he does. Uh, a couple of dates to remember. Teams can uh, designate the franchise tag mm -hmm. on March 10th. Free agency begins on March 18th. Restricted free agents have to sign their offer sheets by April 17th. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of stuff right there. Yeah, all those dates are very important. The number one big thing is the franchise tag that's what's so important and for example Justice Simmons if you don't get everything figured out from there then you may have to look and say okay put Justice Simmons on the franchise tag that's an option that is available for the Denver Broncos so it gives a chance for your top tier players to be able to stay on the roster and that's exactly what you want with that with him all right now Drew Locke mm -hmm. I, I, did he did he say, decide for us that he deserves the job as starting quarterback well, he permanently? Said, yeah, he said he did. And then you look at Vic Fangio and his comments after the game as well. And there weren't anything against him being the starting quarterback next season. But he's 4-1 of the starter. He had seven touchdown passes, three interceptions. Also beat the Raiders last night as well. The biggest thing, though, with Drew Locke, and I had a chance to talk with uh, Deshaun Hamilton, wide receiver for the Broncos, went into the locker room. As he says, there's just this youth um, enthusiasm that's in the huddle, just in the huddle. And all the guys get a chance to build together. And also you look at the numbers from Deshaun Hamilton, for example. With Joe Flacco, he wasn't getting the football. We get the drops, but he wasn't getting the football. Hmm. Drew Locke is a guy who looks over everybody and he's able to throw the ball to every person. There's a reason why you look at the box score and you see there's always seven, eight different guys touching the football. It's not just one guy that's going to catch the ball with Drew Locke there. He's going to hit a whole lot of other different guys. Well, too. that's an important thing for a quarterback and pretty big deal for a rookie quarterback mm -hmm. to be hitting people here, there, there, and there well, all over the place. Because you just can't double team one guy. You just can't double yeah. team Cortland Sutton. Now you have to worry about Deshaun Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Now you have Tim Patrick. Imagine what this team would look like when you put under another wide receiver out there as well. Maybe get somebody in the first round or second round at a very wide receiver heavy draft. So there's a lot of different moves this Broncos team's going to make. That's an interesting thought. And if you don't need to worry about quarterback, then you can go for that wide receiver high, right? Yeah, it's interesting how that works, right? You don't yeah. have to waste a pick on a quarterback <laughs> trying to find the guy because you have the guy at quarterback. Now you can fill us some other spots, and that's what the Broncos need to do. All right, final look at the AFC West standings. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Raiders are no longer the Oakland Raiders after that defeat I yesterday. Know. They'll be 
The Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, they'll be in Vegas, but they'll also be in third place as well as the Broncos moved up to second place with the win. Believe it or not, they are in second place. Go from the basement to the second uh, second place in the AFC West. Then the Los Angeles Chargers, they are in the bottom of the division. And the Kansas City Chiefs, 12-4, and four, they won a division, and they also get a bye week to get the playoff started. All right, we can expect big changes for the Chargers, that's for sure. Oh, 100%. Phillip yeah. Rivers might not be there next year. Is There's a it? chance that he could be gone, and that's mm. really tough to see. There's talks that he could be going to the Indianapolis Colts as well. I, I, I've loved to hate Phillip Rivers through the years. I mean, oh, he's, he's so good. Yeah, he's always been yeah, good, and he's so been a good challenge yeah. for the Broncos. Yes. He's been for really great games, so, you know, we wish him the best if, if that's it for him. Broncos opponents next year. Yes. That's out, right? It's already out. Okay. Believe it or not, the Broncos opponents are out. Now, the schedule isn't out but the opponents are out and this is what the Broncos will face the AFC East and the NFC South opponents the Broncos will be at home against the AFC West opponents as well as the Titans Bills Bucks Dolphins and Saints be on the road against the Falcons Jets Panthers Patriots and Steelers and think about this they will be they will have five games on the road in the Eastern time zone Ooh. going to be very difficult for the Broncos next year Panthers, Patriots, and the Steelers. Oh, yeah. That's kind of tough. Oh, very tough schedule. But you know what? If you're going to get to the playoffs and get to where you want to be, you got to go through some of the best either way. All right. Let's peek at the uh, playoff schedule, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Know, there's still some football left. 16. Well, what? There's 12 games left or 12 teams rather left in the um, playoffs and this is what we have with the wild card starting on Saturday Titans going up against the Patriots you have the Bills and the Texans in the NFC you have Vikings Saints and Seahawks Eagles all the AFC games are on Saturday the NFC games are on Sunday okay so a lot of people have, have kind of you know jumped on this bandwagon with Drew Locke yeah. and now let's look backwards yes because yes. people like me were saying where's Drew Locke early in the season mm -hmm. they finally put him in the Broncos win a whole pile of games <coughs> and then we yeah. go what was the whole thing behind making him wait he wasn't that seriously injured yeah he did have the thumb injury and he wasn't yeah. He wasn't injured enough to where he lost the rest of the season. But I did ask him a question yesterday in the press conference, and I asked him why was it a blessing in disguise? Because he mentioned that it was a blessing in disguise that he actually had that time off. And the biggest thing for him was I could prepare for a game mm -hmm. in every different way, the mental part, the physical part. I could prepare, but I didn't have to play. So now I could get caught up to speed slowly but surely, and that's what helped him out on the field as well. Talk to guys like Peyton Manning. Uh, go and talk to John Elway about what type of things should I do. All those different things helped out Drew Locke, and that's why he did so well. Was it the right thing? It's the right ah, move. It's the right move. I, I, I paused. <laughs> I took a breath. I didn't pause there, okay? It was the right move. And the reason yeah. why it's the right move is this. It's all about the future. It's not about what happens this season. It's about what happens for the next decade. If Drew Locke is truly that guy, that is the right move for the next decade. If they're going to hold on to him for a long time, right? A okay. whole lot of ifs. But up you're there. saying to this season, this season's just a, an adjustment uh, season. Let's call it what it is. Once yeah. you start the year 0 and 4, it's yeah. a lost season. You're not getting to the playoffs generally yeah. when that happens. And the Broncos did a very good job 7 to 5 to end the season, but you started off 0 and 4, didn't win a game in September. If you just have two plays that come back or you just win two of those games in the fourth quarter, you're in the playoffs. Okay, we saw some empty seats in the stands, yeah. you know, as the season went on. Just do fans come back? Fans will come back, but yeah. fans come back as wins happen. Fans don't just come back because things happen. They'll be back at the beginning of the year just because of that enthusiasm, new season. But if you want to keep around for November and December games, you better start winning some games.